So if you're just starting um, these videos right in the middle, um, this is what we did in the last videos. We made all of these functions that have to do with RSA encryption. Well, these are functions and this one's just a script. And um, then we're gonna kind of play around with it and see if we can make them a little bit more, I guess, robust. So if we wanna kind of play around with this, um, I think the next steps would be to come in here and instead of us plugging in those values for P and Q, that we could have it um, generate primes on its own. So remember that MATLAB can generate primes. Uh, let's say that we're gonna make, I don't know, uh, we're gonna list, ooh, I can't call it P, I'm gonna call it this thing. I'm um, gonna call it the list of primes less than like 500 in MATLAB. I don't know if this is gonna work because I've never tried it this far. Um, so uh, the next thing I would need to do, let's kind of do this off to the side. Um, if I generate the, these are the primes here that are under 500. So there's 95 of them. Um, so in order to know how many there are, I can say there's this many. I can ask for the length of this thing. So I guess what I was trying to go with is that if I, because I was first of all, I was going to say, well, what if I just randomly pick, um, two numbers but the problem is what if i pick the same number twice then i'm in kind of trouble um so maybe what i want to do is um, i want to put those numbers in a different order um, and then just randomly pick two of them so uh, i, I want to pick a random number between 1 and 95 but i don't want to pick the same number twice so there's this cool thing you can do in matlab called rand perm so I'll just show you what that means. Like if I do, if I do rand perm of eight, see it comes with the numbers one through eight in a different order, which is great. Now the chances if I just ask for a rand i eight, um, it's gonna give me eight and then it's, see that actually happened. I got the same number twice. Yay, thank you for the random number gods being nice to me. So that's something we wanna avoid. So if we do the permutation and we picked the first two, um, then that would, um, I guess, give us a good, a good start. Now there's lots and lots of things that can go wrong here and that's okay. Um, we're just playing. We're not doing this for real at all. Um, so I'm going to randomly generate X's with this many. So basically the idea is now I would pick the 81st prime and the 14th prime. So P would be, um, this thing. So I would pick the um, first one of X, and then for Q, I'd pick the second one of X. Now, picking the first and the second one doesn't really matter. You could pick the last one and the 17th to last one, and any of that would be fine. Um, but just to kind of give you an idea what this would look like, I'm going to run this. All right. So I've got all my primes. There's 95 of them below 500. I always forget that 499 is prime. That one shocks me every time. It does not feel like it should be prime. And then here are the numbers 1 through 95. So basically I'm picking the 10th and the 61st. So it says the 10th and the 61st are 29 and 283. So the 10th is here. And then the 61st is going to be somewhere around here. Yeah, 283. So um, now there's other things you could do like... Um, Let's see. Sorry, I was like kind of getting off into my own little world about like, surely there's a way to avoid getting like smaller numbers because if I run this eventually, I could get some pretty small primes. Like 73, I guess it's not that small. Um, so maybe I'm worried. There we go. So like <laughs> Q being five is probably a bad idea. So let's see if there's something I can do about that. So if I want to randomly generate the numbers one through 95, but I want to ignore, how many do I want to ignore? Ooh, I have an idea. So let's say that right now these numbers are one, two, three, four, five, six, except I can't spell, four, five, six. Um, so I, but I only want to choose from four, five, and six. Um, what I could do is I could do a rand perm of the numbers one, two, and three. And then I could add three to each of the numbers in the rand perm. All right, now I'm just going nuts. Okay, so for example, let me show you what this looks like. Um, so if I have rand 
term of, let's pretend I had 16. So I'm going to go 16 divided by 2. Okay. Um, and if you're worried about having um, uh, an odd number, you could say the floor. So um, if I'm going to round down of 16 divided by 2, or however many it happens to be. So I'm going to do a RAND perm of 16 divided by 2, and then I'm going to add the, I think the floor of 16 divided by 2 again. And I think that might end up that we end up not getting um, all the way up to, no, we got all the way up to 16. Let's see if I change this to 17, if we get all the way to 17. Ooh, no. So I'm going to add the ceiling to get back. Now I'm getting up to 17. Yay! Okay, so um, basically what I'm going to do is this way I'm only getting the second half of the primes. I'm only getting the, the larger primes. I'm not going to accidentally be generating random primes that are like two because that's not a very good encryption. So I'm basically going to do something like this. So hopefully this kind of makes sense. Basically, um, again, I'm... So I had to do the floor, and honestly, I didn't think about this in advance. It's just the fact if you take a look, if I do the floor and the floor, none of these numbers get to be 17. So um, if I just change this to ceiling, then there we get to 17. So I just, I, I, there was no real math going into that except for playing around with it. So basically, I'm going to do a RAM perm of the floor of this many divided by 2. This is, has nothing to do with RSA. We're just trying to make it um, a more robust um, generation algorithm. Um, so I'm going to do the floor of this many plus 2, and then I'm going to add the ceiling of this many divided by 2. And then let's see what happens. Okay, so now I'm getting the bigger numbers. Let's see if I run this a while. I shouldn't get anything that's less than... So about halfway is like 45. So I shouldn't get any numbers that are less than 200. No matter how many times I run this, all the numbers should be 200 or greater. And that's what's happening. So that's good. So that means I'm getting better primes to begin with. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all of this. Um, well, not all of this, just to make it pretty, I guess, is where I'm going with this. So I've got this. All right. And the only, I mean, I could have hard-coded 500 in there. I just wanted this to be something that I could mess with if I wanted. But the idea is, now when I generate the key, instead of having p equal to 11 and q equal to 13, I can have this, which randomly picks, I can kind of comment this, randomly picks two prime numbers to run this on. And now, if I want to, I can come back over here to practice and I can run this. So run it. Um, so if I come over here and I look, um, oh, it's not going to show me right now because I haven't done it yet. All right. Um, so let's see, a secret message, a small number, please. But I know in my head that these numbers are good up to 200. So I'm going to secretly give it the number 150. So that's the encrypted message. And it comes back as 150. Okay, I was actually not 100% sure that was going to happen. I'm going to unsuppress this just so I can see what those values come out to be. So um, the E value is really, really small, and the N value and the D value are high. I did some reading, and apparently it turns out that that E value doesn't have to be really big. Apparently in real life they use something like 2 to the 16 minus 3 or something. I don't know. Um, which apparently is a small number for whatever it is they're doing. But um, the complication of the encryption has less to do with the E and um, basically all to do with the, with the D. So um, let me just try another small number. Yay! Okay, so um, we were able to make a slightly more complicated thing, and it worked. If you want to play with it a little bit more, another thing we might do is instead of starting E here and counting up, we can start here and count down by one and go down to two so our E would be bigger if you feel better having a, a larger value for E. We'll see if that makes a difference. So there's a giant value for E, giant value for N, giant value for D. So my secret message is still, say, 150. It encrypts to a totally different value, and it decrypts back to 150. Wow, I didn't actually expect this to work. I was expecting to spend a lot more time editing this and cussing at it, and apparently I don't have to do that right now. So encrypted. 
decrypted, ta-da, and it works. Oh my gosh, is it, is it, I'm just super excited. So anyway, um, there we go. We've got ourselves a nice little way to generate keys and you can send this encrypt function to all of your friends and it'd be super cool because yeah, that's what we're doing. Sorry, or you know, you could just use any app in the universe pretty much that has this. But like in theory, you could now create your own encryption and it'd be super awesome and super secretive and you know, secret society and stuff. Yay!